We're looking at a spindle out of a Ford Escape somewhere around the early 2000s. And it's roughly five and three quarter inches wide, somewhere around that, five and a half. It's a little hard to measure right now. But you can see that once again, this is the part of the bearing that stayed on the spindle. And uh, what you do is you cut that. I use a Dremel tool and I cut just about all the way through it. Hit it with the cold chisel and it just slides right off. That's a real easy way to get it off. There's other ways as well. So this is the spindle that, that was on the vehicle and I pressed it out and when I did it broke. I want to also show you the adapter that I made on my hydraulic press here for specifically this kind of an application. When you drop your spindle in to press it out, you put it in like that into the press and then the cage that this sits into with your ball joint on it and your tie rod um, hook up and then the piece that goes you know how it snakes away from the center piece and it hooks onto the strut on the side well this here adapter is what I really want to talk to you about whether you're doing on an escape or whatever vehicle you need enough room for it to clear so six inches gives me a pretty good range of vehicles a lot of them are only you know four and a half inch five inch and if all four sides are covered in which you can use for some applications but we're talking about pressing out a wheel bearing when you have that arm that comes over if all the sides of your housing are the same height you still have trouble trying to build up an edge to set the top on to then press this bearing out and drop it out what I've done is I've designed the edge here so that it just has a little support so it doesn't fall off you know the um, the base there and I put it in put that arm to the strut over set it there have the rest of the cage here and then you just grab your lever put it in and press it out if you're looking for a neat way and something to keep you from having to stand things up on end because without this if all you have is your base what you're up against is finding pieces in your supply of iron, setting up on edge like that, hoping they'll balance, then, you know, looking for the right size. Sometimes you have to go this height, which is a lot higher, and you can see it's wobbly, or using different pieces, you know, trying to make and match something like that. What works really good is what I just showed you. And that is to weld together for yourself something like this. What I did is I put a tongue on the bottom so that uh, it doesn't fall off. When you're sliding around it gives you a little bit of warning when you're going too far. So there. Make yourself something like that in a matter of a few minutes. This is four inches high. And... Uh, six inch square a little more than six inches in one way and you have something that will uh, serve you a long time for a multitude of purposes you can always block it in if you need you know to use it for some other things and uh, you're away but it's a lot better than this little base i have on my little 12 ton hydraulic jack this is mechanica sand cheers